to, to its former glory. And um, a lot of care has been taken to work in partnership with the Baroness and with the council and with others. So I'm only here to say please support this because it's an excellent chance for us to restore a fabulous building. So thank you. Okay, it is um, open to committee. Uh, anybody want to particularly speak? Have a number of comments to make. Well, maybe this is so good. Ian, I'll take you first. Yeah, I just personally share, I think this is the kind of development that proves that we don't need to build on the green belt, frankly. Uh, we have derelict brownfield sites like this, like Council on Areas Outlined, and there is uh, a requirement, I think, within, I think it's on page 23, that there is going to be affordable housing as well, affordable accommodation provided within the development, which is an issue that we've raised in previous applications that hasn't been provided. So I think, uh, like Councillor Mooney, I think this will enhance the area. George? Just very, just very quickly, and so I don't want to take up too much time, but the whole top and bottom of this Gibson House has been on the go now for over five years where we've been trying to ensure that we get the marvellous opportunities that Bernie mentioned, um, the uh, top quality accommodation uh, that comes with it, and as Ian just quite rightly said, the affordability element which comes into it. I think it meets all the criteria and I'm absolutely delighted that it's here tonight. Okay, many of us familiar with uh, Gibson House, it's a very visible uh, feature on the, the top road there as you go into to New Brighton. Uh, I go back far enough to remember when it was a nursing home um, in, in a previous life. Um, I think just to sort of qualify some of the comments made, it just show how difficult it is to develop brownfield sites and to encourage renovation as opposed to demolition and um, having a clear site. It, 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 it's taken nearly 10 years for a scheme of enough finance to actually create that. And I remember many years ago being, being interviewed a, a former life as leader of the council and the first two questions on the radio were when are we going to develop Gibson House? And so that shows how long ago people were demanding that this was de dealt with. There was lots of stories about what it was going to be, what it wasn't going to be, and all lots of scare and what have you. And this shows that the council working with developers and, and, and in a sense we've had to give up some open space that's not realised that there's not, it's not without some compromise on this side. How difficult it is to get renovation as opposed to demolition. The building is not listed, is that correct, officer? So, and I don't believe you need permission for demolition under the plan of law. So, this is a real success, a real victory for everyone working together, but just shows how long it has taken to develop that. So it's not an easy task, but it's worthwhile while putting the time and effort in. So thank everyone involved, including um, the developer and, and everyone involved. And the last word I'll give to Tony is the ward councillor. Uh, actually, it's oh, so, it's no, it's 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 sorry. Oh, I'll get, get, get banished for that one. It's not quite in my world, Chair, but I think you like it. Yes, I would. And I've certainly moved to approve, it's long overdue this. Uh, it's bringing them back into use a long neglected building, uh, a neglected site, and I think it's a type of development that we as an authority should welcome. I fully endorse my colleagues' comments about the affordability, and I think that the last thing this committee would wish to do would be to jeopardise this scheme by neglecting any further. So I move to approve, Chair. Okay, that's a formal move. Does anyone second it? Uh, George, seeing George there, so okay, Kat. Yeah, fine. George, a second. Well, it's been moved and second, seconded. All those in, in favour of the approval with everything on the late list as well, of course. Is that agreed? Is that unanimous? Yeah? Anybody? Nobody against? Okay, so that's unanimous. Those are in the Gibson House, that's been approved. And well done, everybody involved with that. A lot of well tonight. Okay, moving on to the other items of members of the public. Um, this is a TPO, and I've um, had different, led, different advice about who can speak and who can't speak. So, as I'm aware, there probably going to be a lot more TPOs coming to this committee. So, I've asked the officers to sort of work on a, a format. So, we're going to have to sort of try and accommodate as many people as we can because we don't normally allow uh, 
broadcasters or residents to speak. So I'm going to take it as if there is no objection to it and treat it similarly as we would a planning application. So I'm going to invite a uh, ward councillor or councillors if they can divide the time up before between them. Um, that, is, is that okay with everyone? Okay. Uh, the advice has been given though is if the applicant, if the objector who is the potential potential developer who has got a country view was in the audience, I would have to invite them. Uh, is, the, is the developer or the person with the country view in the audience? Okay, so for the records, I'm playing this fair and equal because I don't want to bounce them back on us for any procedural issues. So I'm invite a board councillor. Sorry, I'll invite the officer first as we do with normal application to talk it through and then we'll invite a board councillor. Sorry if you have to wait here, but we're with you at TPOs. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, the attached report is from four members of an objection to a proposed tree preservation order on two groups of trees and to recommend that that order um, is to be confirmed. The first group um, of trees consists of an oak sycamore or willow birch and is located at the rear of 41 to 45 Stanley Avenue. The reasons for making this order is that the trees are in a prominent um, long distance, long distance views. Um, in both in public spaces um, and private walkways, including the main course way, um, the main road and store hall. The second group of trees is located um, adjacent to Mount Road, which is the southeast of One Stanley Avenue. Um, and these trees are considered to provide an unusually uh, important boundary on Mount Road. There have been a number of letters of support for the field and one objection. The objection is based on the fact that the Road Council has not specified by the immediate boundary of the trees. The question of the trees are prominent enough for long distance viewers, and whether there are a number, as there are a number of dead trees, whether or not it should be, um, be given. The response from, from the council is that Group 1 is situated at the edge of a conservation area and does um, affect the character of the conservation area. The cox is visible from a number of functional dwellings on Stanley Avenue and is clearly visible from the Beaver Causeway. In addition, the historical map shows that the crops of trees has been present in this location since 1875. Um, the second group of trees are visible from uh, public access strip directly adjacent to the B5151 uh, at a junction of the causeway. Um, so, for these reasons, it's recommended that the order be um, applied. Okay, so as I've said, um, there's no petition or objection, so I'm going to call the ward councillor. Seems fine. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for allowing us to speak on this one. Um, TPO 399, this one, has been recommended by Royal Council's own tree preservation officer and the order covers the two copses that have been described by the officer, one situated behind 41 to 45 Stanley Avenue, and the other one is the one that you can see at the top of Mount Road. The order says that the trees marked G1 are prominent in the long distance views from local spaces, for example, Beaver Causeway, Mount Road, and Storm Hill. The order also says that the trees marked G2 provide a visually important boundary adjacent to Mount Road. There has been one letter of objection, but many letters in favour of the trees being protected. We believe that there have been 20 to 30 letters posted to the council by local residents in support of the protection of the trees. If you drive along Beaver Causeway at any time of the year, you can see this area from the road. It forms an important part of the view into and out of the Mount Wood Conservation Area. And so it's essential to protect the setting, a concept which is recognised in the Council's own planning policy CH2. These views are also enjoyed by many runners, riders, cyclists, walkers, who all use the area. Section 198 of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990 states that trees or woodlands to be considered for TPOs, or at least part of them, should normally be visible from a public place such as a road or a footpath accessible to the public, and these trees certainly are. These copses also have historical significance. Um, the officer has mentioned um, one day that we can go further back than that. They were both in existence long before any of the houses were built, and on the historical
historical maps this has been proven. In fact, G2 is a tributary from the ancient woodland which cocooned Mountain conservation area. And the copses are one of the reasons why the, the designation area is boundaries, why it was named because of those trees. Um, so they've been there a long time and they're very important to that conservation area. The leaflet guide to protected trees published by the Department for Environment says that where relevant to an assessment of the immunity value of trees or woodlands, authorities may consider taking into account other factors such as importance to nature conservation. Badgers have recently been seen in gardens in Stanley Avenue and in some of the copses in the Green Causeway. A letter from Wirral and Cheshire Badger Group has been sent to the council confirming that there is evidence of badger activity in the copses outlined as one on the TPA. They've said that the two coverts in question are important for wildlife and they provide valuable habitat and a wildlife corridor. Further, there's if there's any development of this land will directly affect the wildlife. Bats are also seen regularly flying through the trees in the evening. The land acts as a buffer zone to the conservation area. And here I've got a petition signed by one and a half thousand people of Wirral who all wish for these trees to be protected. These signatories are not just from Reddington Ward. They are spread across the borough and beyond, and we've broken them down to the wards. And I think we have been signed by most wards in the world. There is a deep concern for these trees and a heartfelt wish for them to be protected. We've noticed a number of inaccuracies in the objections that have been received from uh, the developer. Uh, they state that the trees along Stanley Avenue um, don't have TPOs. Whereas the Department for Environment says that all trees within a conservation area are subject to protection, which is effectively what your TPO does. So it's a strange objection. The objection sustained that it would not be possible to view area G1 due to mature hedgerows and trees. But this area is clearly visible from the road all throughout the year, and it's a view that's much enjoyed by other people who use it. Um, I referred earlier to the age of the cops. Um, the developers state that there's no historical value in the trees, but maps dating back to 1840, which is 35 years before the, uh, the officers, actually show those copses. The letter of objection also states that changes to the green grass is not an adequate reason to service the TPO as none of the trees are under threat. But if none of the trees are under threat, why are they objecting to the TPO to be put on? <laughs> Essentially, the Bevington councillors and a vast number of residents who have contacted us feel that TPO 30 should be made permanent. It, not allowing it would have a significant negative effect on our local environment and for all who access it. And if these trees are not protected, there's a danger they'll be removed, and we would ask that the uh, TPL is made permanent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, that's all there. Oh, or am I? <sighs> Jerry, are you going to say anything contrary? Yeah, uh, well, just a couple of additional comments, and I won't take a couple of minutes or so, that's all. Yeah, just to, to wrap up. Go on then, see if yeah. in the air, Jerry, you can speak. <laughs> Please stop me. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, obviously, I agree with everything that's, uh, that's been said. Uh, as Council for Bevington, you know, obviously, I also support the tree preservation orders. Um, these areas are vital to the well-being of the local community and particularly wildlife fauna, many insects. Uh, wildlife, wildlife fauna are in massive national decrease due to destruction in these vital areas. We've just heard recently about the possible catastrophes in the future due to the, due to the rapid decline of insects. Green areas are vital to us and, as I've said before on many occasions, parks and green spaces in London save the NHS 765 million a year. We've heard developers using phrases as unlimited immediate value to justify the destruction of these areas. Uh, I'll have to bring 
to date, David Attenborough, to the committee one of these times. <laughs> uh, time is running out before the unique nature of the world is destroyed. Housing, yes, but not where it wrecks and destroys our treasured eco ecosystems. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jimmy, for your contribution. Um, we did. We did ask if the developers here to, to respond. They're not here, um, so I'm going to either open up to the members or go straight to the vote. So I'm going to speak again. Just, just one. Stuart. Just one. Part of page. Is it page 56? I mentioned at the bottom saying that the objector had sought the advice of experienced arboreal cultural consultant. If one assumes you get to the conclusion that uh, you were of limited immediate, immediate value. Um, I mean, we all know consultants' stories, but uh, <laughs> it just goes to show, doesn't it, really, that uh, you, know, you can get a consultant to tell you anything you want to hear. Why did you tell the consultant first what it is you want him to sell? So you might be experienced, but <laughs> only <you> want. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to sort of comment that we do need to have some procedures in place, uh, officers and everybody for these TPOs. We are moving forward, we're getting a lot more of these coming to committee and we need to know how to deal with them uh, properly because we may be open to legal challenge as developers do things like that. Um, so we are clearly doing our best to protect you. We, we would hope that those who develop in the local plan will also develop a policy about trees and, uh, and how we deal with that, entwined with that. But our job is to deal with the TPOs as presented to us, and I'm going to ask, move that we agree the recommendation of level one, that planning committee, confirm this tree preservation on this. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Yeah, it's a question to the uh, planning officers, I think. We had uh, Councillor Muscrat submitted a very substantial petition of the names to this. In terms of the procedures that we have as a council, if residents want to submit a petition in support of a TPO, that is allowed before the meeting is moved. As I say, um, I do my level best as chair to deal with. I, I had no idea there was a no, petition. No, I, I, yeah, it would have been nice to present that. But are you formally presenting that, Chris, to, to hear or are you going to full council? Um, through you, Chair, um, we were told um, by the planning department that we couldn't present it here. Right. So um, we can either plan to put, put it here or we can put it at full council. Here it is, I haven't made it okay. yet. Oh, no, um, okay. Um, again, we, you know, echo my, my thoughts, officers, come back with the protocol, we'll get it, we'll get it in place and uh, deal with it as we can. So I'm doing my, my utmost here to see democracy go in. Okay, so I thought we move the tree preservation order be uh, agreed. It's a seconder. Uh, I think Wendy is seconder of that. All yeah. those in favour, please show. Are there anybody against? No. Okay, so that's me unanimously. Thanks for all the contribution on that item. And now back into the agenda for uh, all. So I've got on my list number six, which is Glenbank.
amend the scheme to remove the garage and access from CV Road to access and parking to the front of the site and um, serve the Millville Road. The key issues have been raised by the objectors and inspecting the original proposal are considered to have been overcome through the, through the cement and scheme. With, through a reduction of the scale and height of the proposed dwelling, the first four windows have been obscurely glazed or removed. The detached garage and access from CV Road has been um, amended and the proposal leads to a wide interface distance between properties and is considered to maintain, maintain the character and appearance of the surrounding area and therefore it's recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Okay, um, there was an original petition against. I understand that much of that has been by the amended application that we've got before us, but just to check, are there anybody here from the original petition to speak in an objection? To, to an objection, no. So therefore, then I have to call the um, applicant. Is there a ward councillor who wishes to speak? No? Okay, so we can move straight into the, the, the matter. Um, if nobody has comments, I could move approval if that was to my favour. I'd move approval. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by George. Okay, all those in favour of this application, please show. And are there anyone against? No, again, that's unanimous. Okay, I've been advised um, that seven and eight are so closely linked that we can present the issues, uh, but we would need a separate vote to get into the, the applications. So I'll bring up the name and then we'll do it. Thank you, Chair. Okay, this site, the Hong Bargains Car Park of Point Road in Northern Town Centre, uh, there's two separate applications, both of which are retrospective. Uh, first, an application for infrastructure within the car park to help manage it. And largest of these is a five metre high pole with an AAPR camera mounted to the top. And advertising for consent for various signs related to parking restrictions at the site. Uh, the sign indicates maximum stay of one and a half hours 